my name is Bob Card. Uh, and myself and Helen Zima uh, purchased the Strand Theater at Old Forge in November of 1991 after uh, having a bunch of banks look at our business plan and tell us to go away. We found one that was uh, willing to take a chance and uh, so we bought this theater and uh, started working on it and opened Memorial Day of 1992 with just the original single screen uh, which initially opened in 1923 and uh, gradually worked on restoring the building um, built an addition in the uh, winter of 1999 to go to four screens without dividing the original auditorium and uh, that basically make the theater economically viable with a goal of it always being here for future generations. Um, I grew up in central New York. Helen grew up in Utica. Um, my grandmother used to bring me to Old Forge when I was a kid. So in the early 70s I look over at this theater from the Howard Johnson's restaurant across the street and want to go to the movies and we never did. The same thing that happened through years of adulthood wanted to get inside the theater, see a movie, see the theater, never did. <laughs> Finally did one time and it was pretty beat up and I told the woman in the box office she had a great place and uh, she kind of uh, frankly said it was for sale and so uh, that, that started that. Um, definitely have a love of the Adirondacks of so historic buildings, historic movie theaters and, and, and film. So uh, that's what got that going childhood obsession, I guess. Right. Um, well, we have a big camera collection on display at, at the theater, uh, which start just above the entrance doors in the lobby. And uh, you can see that there's uh, an early Kodak uh, darkroom lamp in the corner that a customer gave us. And if you look around, uh, some of the old Polaroids, including a painting of a Polaroid swinger, and a Polaroid swinger, and another Polaroid swinger. Uh, over here, there's an Argus C3, which is really one of the first um, commercially viable 35 millimeter uh, cameras. It was very popular. In this corner, uh, there are some early Kodak uh, box cameras, um, some of which I, I used to use actually because they, they take a large roll film and have, have a, a very large negative and you can do multiple exposures without uh, you know, having to advance the film and get some kind of interesting effects. As we head into the hallway, um, the access is our addition with the three new auditoriums. The camera collection, this light gets pretty serious. Um, in fact, over the door to the first small auditorium, there's a, a shelf uh, with cameras that are all from one family from the Buffalo area. And they brought in their cameras and wanted us to display them, and then they visit them on a, on a yearly basis and bring their friends in to see them. Um, and this is a, a Kodoscope 16mm uh, projector. Uh, this is a portable screen that would flip so you'd have a screen side and a, and a paneled wood side so it'd be decorative and look okay in your living room. And this is the, uh, the Splicer editor. And uh, it was actually an early home entertainment. Kodak would sell you those machines and that whole setup. And then they would rent the 16 millimeter film so you could do movies at, at home. Um, and that's also from that same family. Uh, it, you know, it's probably sat in their attic for a lot of years and then came here. So I started collecting cameras when I lived in Waterville, New York, which ironically is where George Eastman was born. I had a neighbor there that would pick garbage all winter and then have a summer long garage sale. So he'd sell a box of cameras, a big box of cameras for four or five dollars and I'd buy boxes of cameras from him and just kind of collected them and then once we, we got here started displaying them in our old concession stand and then when we uh, uh, restored the lobby that's when we started displaying them in a, in a, in a, in a better way. Um, and. They'll also over the years buy cameras at, th at thrift stores and at gra other grad sales, but what really happened is customers who appreciated our camera collection started adding to it. Instead of throwing things out when they were cleaning out the basement or the attic, they'd bring them here and it became a real retirement home for cameras. My name's Peter. Uh, we've been coming up to a seasonal family camp here in Old Forge and the Adirondacks for 70 plus years. I've been coming here to the Strand since I was probably three years old and remember when it was just the original Strand and a stage and one uh, screen and now it's blossomed into probably the best overall 
uh, viewing and uh, uh, documentary of filmmaking and cameras that I've seen in my entire life. It's a, a literal museum of photography and uh, filmmaking and something everybody should try to get up to Old Forge to see. Hi, I'm Mary Ellen Denayo. I've been coming to the theater since 1947. And the first film I saw was The Wizard of Oz. My name is Jacob Martincraft. I've been coming up to the Adirondacks for quite a long time. Um, been spending summers here since about 2010, 2011. Uh, and all those times, pretty much every summer, we took several trips to the Strand Theater. Uh, it's a wonderful place, it really is. It's kind of that stereotypical, not even stereotypical, like it, it's an archetypal, quintessential is the right word, I think, uh, American theater. The decorations, all the old video cameras lining the walls, old posters. It's a really amazing place to go see a movie. There's a, a, a lot of home grade um, uh, uh, film equipment. These are, are, are nice 16 millimeter projectors. There's some 8 millimeter projectors, things that people would have had in their own home to, to show home movies. And also uh, 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 film and, and, and cameras that you know you would take pictures with or also make movies with. Um, we've also got a nice display of, uh, of, of the home editors. Um, you know, you would shoot movies on 8mm film or Super 8 and then you could splice them together, edit them, view them on these. You know, pretty primitive but it, it worked well and, uh, and this stuff's a lot of fun. I, I guess one of the things I really enjoy about displaying the cameras is that for, depending on, on your, your age, some people see these things and, and, and it triggers memories. They remove, they had that exact camera, they had a camera like it, they had a projector like that. Um, and, and, and it starts a, a, a whole course of dialogue between them and, and others. And then there are people who are, are younger that really didn't use film equipment or haven't used film equipment at all. They've always used digital cameras or taken pictures with their phone. So for them, it's kind of a, a history lesson. It's a and and you see people talking, people who use these these uh, uh, cameras, and people who never did talking with each other about it, and uh, people seem to really genuinely in, enjoy it. Um. Um, a, a few years ago now, well, uh, three years ago, anyhow. Um, basically, the theaters like this one, theaters everywhere, were faced with. Um, having to convert from film-based projection to uh, digital projection because the studios are deciding to uh, phase out distributing movies on 35 millimeter film in favor of just distributing movies digitally. Uh, it's a big cost savings uh, uh, plan for them. Uh, but it, it put theaters like this one in a bind. Uh, we have four auditoriums and the bill to convert our four auditoriums to digital was slightly over $300,000. And that didn't create new business. It was just self-preservation. Just being, you know, have, we had to raise that money to stay in business. Um, the studios offered uh, a, an odd little financing plan that would work for major circuits, but not for independent theaters. Uh, and really, would have put us out of business. Uh, as would borrowing that kind of money uh, to try to stay in business. We were very fortunate here. Uh, there were two groups in the Adirondack region uh, that helped various theaters out. Um, in Old Forge, there's the, a group called CAP21, which offered to help us set up a, they're, they're a not-for-profit group, we're a for-profit entity. They offered to help us uh, with, with fundraising um, and did a big 90th birthday party gala where people came and, and, uh, and, and celebrated the theater and, and, and donated proceeds. Um, uh, they did an online campaign and we received proceeds from all over the country. And then there's another group in the Adirondacks based in Saranac Lake called Adirondack North Country Association which did the Go Digital Go Dark campaign for all the theaters in the Adirondack Park. Uh, Old Forge, Indian Lake, uh, Skirn Lake, Tupper Lake, Lake Placid, uh, Sable Forks. Um, and, uh, and they basically uh, did the same thing. They, 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 um, 
they, they did an online uh, campaign uh, where people could uh, donate um, and they could specify a specific theater or they could ask that their proceeds be divided amongst all the theaters. Um, they produced a, a pretty interesting commercial uh, with a, a kind of a monster coming to town that would take the movies away that uh, all the theaters showed. Um, it was a uh, it had humor, but it also was very serious, and, and, and it certainly worked. But um, basically what happened between ANCA's help, CAP21's help, um, we raised a, a, a good chunk of the $300,000, and we were uh, left uh, you know, with uh, maybe a little over $70,000 that we had to come up with on our own. Um, so uh, that, that helped uh, tremendously. Um, and. Uh, very thankful and very, very humbled by that too. And, and one of the things that made us feel good um, was when you looked at where the, all the contributions came from. That uh, there was a map of the United States, and contributions came in from all over, all across the, the country. Um, and August of that particular summer, uh, there was a, a heavy uh, bunch of donations from the West Coast, from California. And, uh, it was kind of interesting to see. Um, uh, how many people from how many different regions come to Old Forge and, and, and come to this theater and, and help us keep it going? And, and, uh, and, and, our, and, and our goal has always been that this theater always be here. That's been a, more of a, a project of, of, of preservation than anything else. Go digital, go dark. Issue was was pretty big. It, it that's what costs Inlet its own uh, movie theater, and the danger of losing the strand as well, which is, it has historic value as well as, as its sentimental value. And that kind of thing is very important to me. Preserving historical buildings, preserving local history, preserving our history is very important. And for such a cheap commercial reason to threaten to take away a theater like the Strand was terrible. So it was amazing to see all the support for uh, for keeping the Strand in Old Forge and for for keeping local theaters in business around the nation. It was very important to me personally as a lover of, of history and I think very important to us and to our heritage and to posterity. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep working to make sure the place is always here and we can keep creating good experiences for people. Yo, this is David Kearns, just got out of the Strand Theater, something I've done every, every day since a child, mainly on weekends. It's a great time, great little theater in the little part of the Old Forge up in the Adirondack Mountains. It's a wonderful time. Bob's a great owner, he always got great movies playing. If you have time on a Friday, Saturday, any time of the week, come watch a movie here at the Strand. It's awesome. My name is Takoro. I've also lived in the Adirondacks my whole life. I've been doing this for years since I was a little kid. Like he said, Bob always does the good stuff. He makes sure that we are always happy customers, midnight movies, friends. It's just a great place. It, it doesn't have that that generic feel that all kind of major movie theaters have. It feels like a local place that you go to with your friends from around the town and you just go to see a movie and have a good time. And it really is the perfect place for summer movies, those big summer blockbusters and popcorn flicks. It's something about the mood of the place. Is, uh, it just it, it sets it apart from a major cinema. And it's, it's, a, it's a major part of uh, the fabric of uh, the towns around here.